Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are just going to talk about uh, the comparisons between the K40 and the 60 watt laser from Monport. Um, things we liked, didn't like. Um, just uh, passing on some information and knowledge uh, and experience in case you are thinking about getting a laser. All right, as some of you know, if you followed us for quite a long time, we started with a diode laser. Um, not very powerful, not very fast, uh, awesome to learn on. And it came with, or it didn't come with any kind of software. So we purchased like burn at that point in time and that's what we learned. And uh, we liked that. So it's kind of influenced some of the things I'm gonna say later. Um, we had a couple of diodes at that point and uh, then we started working with Monport and got our four first CO2. So K40 is kind of your entry level CO2. Uh, a bunch of different companies make them. They're more or less all the same. I haven't kept up on all the models since we already have one. So Monport is putting in Lightburn compatible boards from the get go now. That uh, happened after we got ours, so ours is not that. So anything we're talking about in this situation, that's going to come up. But 40 watt laser, one of the big keys on it. Um, you'll notice we took out the bed. Got different things in here. That's how I raise and lower things. Um, so that's one of the big uh, differences between the two lasers. This laser has got an adjustable bed. It comes up, it's down. It's honeycomb, so it's got great airflow through it. K40 does not have that. It's locked in. Um, another thing with the K40 that's actually a nice thing, it's bench top, right? So it's made to put on top of a table, put on a bench. Our situation, it fits in a cart. I uh, love the way this is set up. We can roll it over wherever we need uh, when we're not using it. 60 watt, uh, in contrast, uh, is just on wheels. It does have feet on it so that you can put it in place. And I'm actually gonna say that this is one of our big cons with this laser is because it's barely over knee high. So I've gotta have a chair out here to work on it or I'm bent over putting pieces in it. You're bent over or on a chair. It's just a little awkward because it's short. And that's really the main con with this machine. Now let's take a look at kind of a different thing that we needed to upgrade on this laser, and that's the laser head. This particular model did not come with an air assist. Uh, we 3D printed one at first and it worked fine until there were some alignment issues and the laser melted it. Took a very long time to get that aimed again once I had that alignment issue it just wasn't doing good the new laser head fixed that problem completely so I don't know about the new models of the K40s but the old models you basically have to upgrade to air assist you have to upgrade the bed you have to upgrade the laser and the mirrors and that takes it from an entry-level machine to you know a lot more expensive the other thing about K40s is that like I said, they are not, this one in particular, not built in to use light burn. So what we did is we actually replaced the motherboard and we've done that three different times now because we wanted to test them all. We started with the built-in one, we moved to Monport's, Monport's first version of light burn board. It, it wasn't very good. It was very hard to get wired in. The power didn't go through. It just, it wasn't a good laser, or wasn't a good motherboard. We didn't like it. We ended up moving to the Cohesion 3D board. It's awesome, but it's, I think like $200. So that's just another big jump to add in to a laser like that, but that board worked great. Then Monport came out with their version two, and it actually worked really good too. So that's the one I think that's in it currently right now, and it, it works fine. Um, and I think it was only a hundred dollars. Another thing that we upgraded on this uh, when we were doing the different boards, so we added a milliamp meter. This way, it's a more consistent way to see where the power is actually at. Um, and that's actually where we discovered that that first board was not putting out the same power. 
Not really sure why, if it's just not hitting the power supply in the right way, but it just wasn't doing it, and we ended up changing that. This is another, you know, $10 wiring labor. Um, and those are the big things that we've upgraded on this machine to really kind of make it usable in the way that we wanted to. Now another comparison between the two lasers is going to be the bed size. The bed size of K40s say 8 by 12. So when that first comes in, it's more realistically an 8 by 10 and a little bit. There is a exhaust piece that comes in this that's pulling air out of it. And if you look right here, you can actually see where the laser burned that. That's how far into the bed that this piece goes. So you're losing almost an inch just right off the bat because of this piece. So got to remove it. This laser is a 16 by 24 bed. So massively bigger. We didn't have to do anything to make that fully work. So it has these pass-through pieces that you can actually put a much larger piece in there and still able to use the laser. Very cool. We haven't used that yet, but it's awesome. We did do some burning uh, before when the piece was too big for this and we had to pull out the old uh, diode lasers just to make them work. Now I talked about the K40's motherboard and how it works. Let's take a look at the 60 watts. So what this is, is it's a Rudio, I think I'm pronouncing that right, DSP controller. Now, the awesome thing about this is that you no longer have to have the computer plugged in all of the time. It's actually got some memory built in. You can use a USB drive and drop the program on here and it's always on here after that. With that in mind, uh, my thought process is on that is okay. Well, if I'm selling a lot of the same piece, I've got that saved on this machine. I never have to pick it up to the computer. I turn it on, I pick that file, I hit go. Awesome for batching. This one just won't do that. Won't do that at all. You're always gonna have to have it plugged into the computer. You're always gonna have to go through the full process, getting it loaded on the computer, going. It's just gonna take longer. So when you get into where you're doing a lot of things, this machine's really gonna shine. Now, a con to this controller that's kind of a mini con, uh, the same version of Lightburn will not run on both of these. You have to upgrade to the DSP version for this machine. We did test that, you definitely have to. And it's like $80 above the regular one. So both of these do come with free versions of software, so you don't have to go to the live burn. That's a personal preference. Uh, 60 Watt came with RD Works. We tested that out a little bit. Not our cup of tea. We will still be using live burn on it. And the K40 came with K40 Whisperer. Now, if you're buying a version that doesn't have light burn built in, that would be what you would want to use. And the only one you can use until you do a conversion to light burn. It's not like just buy light burn and start working on it, unless you've got the proper board. So I did double check prices um, just this weekend. And so these are going to vary because it is during the holidays. So there are sales going on. This machine right now. I believe with the light burn, because I didn't even find one without it, is $480 right now with light burn. Now, the new ones I believe also have, or can have air assist built in. Uh, they can have a red laser dot. You're not gonna get any Z adjust, but it is gonna have other things built in that this machine doesn't. And I believe the range is built into uh, Monport that I checked was anywhere from yeah, that $480 to almost $710, $800. Um, very wide range. I don't know what all those come with. Like I said, we've also done upgrades all after that that would take you up another $100 or $50, somewhere in there, depending on what you want. So you're looking at a range, essentially $480 to probably $800 on a K40. So entry level for a co2 yes but depending on what you're wanting to use uh, not necessarily what you want to go with the biggest deciding factor for me on that is a do you want to work on the laser because if you're not wanting to tinker with it and not wanting to mess with that don't get a k40 
if you're okay with tinkering on it and building it, upgrading it, uh, customizing it, K40 is a great place to start. But also think about what you're wanting to do work on because it's an 8 by 12 It's never getting bigger than that. Our 60 watt, 16 by 24 this one is autofocus. It does have a Z adjustment manual. Ours is autofocus, so you can just hit that and it will adjust it to the piece. I'm saying that because it raises the price a little bit. Now, everything comes in this one. Air Assist is built in, unlike our K40. So we didn't need a compressor, we didn't have to run hosing, none of that. Didn't have to get a different um, laser head to accommodate that, all built in. The only thing neither one of these come with that some of the other models do is water cooler, right? These don't have water cooling built in. This machine is great. I highly recommend it. I believe right now it was right at the $2,300 mark. That is on sale. Usually I believe it's $2,700. Um, but you can always get discounts in different ways. Very least, 10% uh, from us using KLR10. Um, and we like this machine a lot, excluding the one big problem that we have with it. It is so short. I know some people have seen that in videos and messaged us on it. Absolutely, it is very short. Don't really like that. Probably some kind of platform or something to raise it up to a working height where we like it. I believe some of the other machines they have have legs underneath them that raise them up 10 inches or so, which would be awesome. Uh, it's just this model doesn't. And this is the lowest end model once you get outside of the K40. So we're really talking about their two entry level uh, CO2s. So with all of that being said, um, we've enjoyed both of them. Absolutely. I mean, even the little diodes we had, we enjoyed yeah, those. Yeah, we really well, have. Um, and, and, and tinkering and messing around and learning is totally in his wheelhouse. So the K40 was great to Absolutely. learn on. Yep. To be perfectly transparent, Monport sent us both of these. We bought all the diodes. Um, we bought all the upgrades. So if, if we were going to be buying it and we started over, I, knowing what I know now and all the frustrations I've had between the diodes and the K40, I would go straight to the 60 watt or bigger because right. I would like a bigger one than this. <laughs> we also want to make sure we can save you the most money that we yeah, are able to. Um, and they gave us our own code for 10% off, um, the KLR10. If there's things that we didn't talk about that maybe you're wondering, um, you know, let us know. Yeah, throw, um, throw the question in the comments. Yeah, we'll address it, we either responding right there or maybe in another video. Right. Um, but uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.